Hey everybody, it's Jason, also known on the forums as Haplifool. Um, first I want to thank uh, Tony, my fiance, who's also got us in for taking this movie. And um, I'm going to be showing you how I make a Haplipalma enclosure. Um, you know, it's, you can do it any way you want, but this is how I do it, and it works. I've got a couple of egg sacs, so I'm doing something right. Um, uh, I've got all my tools here. I've got uh, a little cage for her to, uh, container to put her in when I remove move her from her uh, current enclosure to the one that I'm changing her in. And uh, I've got uh, a hide piece of cork bark to put in the enclosure with her. A little vine for decoration. Uh, some isopods to uh, help keep the tank clean. Gloves, because I don't want to get bit. A um, wooden spoon and tongs. The empty and clean cage. Some substrate. Um, some moss and vermiculite to hold moisture, which they like a lot of, and uh, some gravel to put in her, in her water dish so that the isopods don't drown, and so that, you know, I like to give them a shallow dish. Um, then some water and uh, RepiSafe, which adds electrolytes and keeps the crud from growing in the water. And electrolytes, uh, that's really important if you're getting a wild-caught haplotoma. Uh, the electrolytes help replenish, obviously, their electrolytes. And uh, that's important when you get a wild-caught animal. And um, distilled water uh, for spray it doesn't leave any water spots in the enclosure. But you don't want to give them distilled water in their water dish because it lacks the minerals that they need. Okay, so now get started with getting the substrate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the first step obviously is putting the substrate in. Uh, what you first want to do is add the vermiculite, which is going to hold in moisture. And I like to put a thin layer of it at the bottom of the enclosure. also helps hold the water and makes for some interesting burrows. When they get to burrowing, they pull it all out and make it part of their burrow. It's really neat. Again, it's really good for holding moisture. Alright, and then the substrate. several inches of. But the good thing about one of these uh, Tom Clearview containers, uh, enclosures, is that um, no matter how many inches of substrate you put in, uh, they always end up burrowing up against one side or another, and you can view them. Well, until they lay on with the thick webbing. Um, and then I have to put the, uh, the hide in as part of the as part of the uh, decor here, but also somehow set it up to where it will encourage the spider to burrow. And I'm having a hard time with this one, but I think I'll figure something out here really quick. Can I go? Huh? 
can I help? Can you help? Yeah, go for it. Usually I have a piece of um, grapevine and it works out pretty well. Okay, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's my part of it. He can't decorate for crap. Maybe the case that she goes behind here, but I'll start something here as well. Usually what they do is sometimes uh, they will make a, a burrow with multiple entrances. Usually about two, so she can go and do whatever she wants. <laughs> 